Oh man, I need some more video ideas. I wonder what I can do. Flipped on the infill panel, the lift, the recovery points, exhaust, headlights, Rima. Oh yeah, could always just do a snorkel. All right, ZD30, D22, Navara, snorkel, enter. Oh yeah, I've always liked the look of the Stano ones. Try that. All right, let me just check. Oh, fuck. I think it's time to do an eBay special. What's going on, guys? Hope you're all doing well. As you would have been able to tell from the intro to this video, I'm going to be putting a eBay snorkel on the ute. So what we've got down here, we'll start with the body of the snorkel, obviously. Then you've got the bit that goes in the guard. And then you've got the bit that attaches from the guard to the airbox. Then your ram head. And then obviously I've got my template there and then my bag of bolts and hose clamps and stuff like that. So before I start, start getting into it, I just wanted to put it out there that I'm not trying to bag out J-Max or in-house fab or all these places, you know, Meredith Metalworks, they all do really good Aussie made snorkels. Um, but for a lot of people in this case, like me, it's just not in my budget at the moment. I just can't do it as much as I would want to do it. Um, can't afford it. So this was just, definitely a cheaper option and that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do today and for anybody else that's wanting to um, use the same snorkel I did I'll just throw the link down in the description um, I got it on sale for like 129 bucks or something so I don't know what the price will be when you click on it but um, it does go on sale here and there so you either wait or you just get it at full price which is I still only think like 179 bucks or something so it's relatively cheap so the first thing I've gone ahead and done, just throwing the template um, on top of the snorkel body just to see if the holes line up. And hopefully you can see that they kind of line up. I guess you get what you pay for, but some of them, like this one, needs to go a bit higher. And especially down here, this one here, it's a little bit off, so I've drawn a little bit higher than that. It is an eBay kit, so you got to remember you are paying 120 bucks for it. So. It's not going to be perfect that's why you have to check double check everything which is what i'm going to do to make it even easier i've just put the studs through um just screwed them in a little bit on the hand tight so that i can actually see where it needs to be drilled out a bit more i'm also just going to jack the car up put it on jack stand on one side just so i can take off the passenger wheel um just lets me get easier access to the guard basically to take the inner guard lining out and take all the clips out <laughs> Before people have a whinge, I know you can't see the jack stand, but it is behind there, so relax. It's a lot heavier than the standard alloys. So you can see up in there, this whole plastic thing, that's the whole inner guard. So I'm just gonna go and take all these screws out, rip out the inner guard, and that'll give me access to inside there. So now that inner guard's out, after many broken clips, you can see, I can see all the way up there. That's the indicator that I need to take out. And that's the hole from the inner guard, and then we'll draw one on the outside, obviously, and that's where it'll come through. So you can see here, I've lined the template up the top of the fender and then the side down here, it's not perfect. Um, well, the template's not perfect because if I do it straight here, it's slightly off here. So I try to do a happy medium. Um, but now I'm gonna go, all I'm gonna go and do is permanent mark the holes and I'm gonna take the template off. Then I'm gonna stick the masking tape on top of those points. And then I'm going to put the template back on and then do the dots again, take the template off, then drill it all.
So I've just rechecked the template. Just quickly put it back on with some tape before. And all the holes line up, which is perfect. Now I can leave that alone. I'm just gonna go through, start with probably a smaller drill bit and then work our way up to, I think it's an 8.5 mil drill bit. Um, and then that should all be drilled. And then the last one I'll do is the big one. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous doing this, but it's gotta be done. So I've measured how many times now? You've only seen put the template on maybe twice or three times, probably put it on about seven times just to make sure. But it's better being safe than sorry. Let's get into it. So this is the final drill with the eight and a half mil drill bit, and then we'll do the hole saw at the end. And this bit I'll be drilling out with an 86 mil hole saw. It's all done. There's no going back now, that's for sure. So when I bought the car ages ago in the glove box, it came with this, and this is just a Duplicolor touch-up paint. So, as anybody wants to see that, this is a silver Navara. Um, it's just like a little pen, so what I'm gonna do is just put that on the outside, um, just to prevent any rust, basically. So while we're waiting for the paint to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and Loctite these studs in the thread, in the thread of the snorkel. This is the Loctite I'm using. This is not the right Loctite. You should be using the red one because that means you can actually get it off. This one is a strong one, so you're not supposed to get it off, but that's all I've got. So that's what I'm going with. After that, we're gonna test fit the snorkel onto the car. Hopefully all the measurements were correct and it should just bolt in straight away. And then after that, we'll get going on just attaching the snorkel to the guard and then we'll start working on the neck piece which means we have to do more drilling and a bit of riveting as well. So I'm not gonna lie, there were two or three holes I had to drill out but apart from that, I only like like a millimeter or two mil, like it was literally nothing. But that's basically how it sits now. I just put the ram head on to see how it looks. It's pretty flush. Um, obviously it's not bolted down yet, so we'll bring this in a little bit. In terms of lining up with the guard, it's quite straight as well. Still have to cut out the blinker. But apart from that, it sits really nice. And then here, I have to drill and rivet that. So it has been a little bit of a shit show, but I actually have managed to get my marks in there. Um, so that's basically where I'm gonna drill. Probably see the best, you can see the hole in the middle. And the other two, took a little bit of convincing, ended up getting it in there. So now I'm just gonna drill them out and then I'll root them in. So I've just got some automotive silicon, 227 six flex. And what I'm gonna do is just fill up the holes here so that make sure no water can get in and things don't rust. Okay, so I ended up riveting this in as well. I did miss um, one of the bolts. I don't know where I've put it. But anyways, two will hold it in. I've siliconed the 
the holes as well as just putting a bit of the silicon down the end and on the ends of the actual bracket just to not get water in them. Um, and you can see the snorkel is bloody tight. Like that's not going anywhere at all. It's not even moving at all, which is perfect. So under the guard, you can see all the bolts and washers are on. And then I put this silicon piece that joins the snorkel in. This is a bit of a pain to get on, not gonna lie. It's quite a tight fit, but I ended up did getting it on. There's your hose clamp there and it runs out down here. You can also see the blinker wiring that I've routed through here. That's because it didn't actually fit up here. It was stretching and I needed, it was originally going through this hole, but I need to get rid of that hole because otherwise the next piece wouldn't fit. So I've ended up routing it through this hole. It's held by conjugate, so it won't rub through. And I've also just pulled some of the wiring through. So that's the connector for the fuel filter. And I just pulled that wiring through, you can see here, it's still held on by some zip ties just here. And then that's the sheathing. And that's the sensor that we need to plug back into the new intake. And I've just pulled it through in the guard so that it can reach through here and all the way to the blinker. So this is probably one of the trickier bits because I was looking at this piece and I was like, how the hell do I get this? in that hole, it just kept hitting the guard. So I'm filming it because I want everybody else to actually have an easy time doing it. So I've seen things on the forums as well of people having trouble with it. So all I did was start with the piece over the guard, okay? So it actually sits over the guard and then you just tilt it down like that until it goes into the hole and then you push it more into the hole and then you pull it down and then that should line up with the air box and then you just have to go underneath and connect it to the silicon bit in the guard the other issue i'm having which i'll show in a sec is that the actual air box isn't lining up so i've got the bendy piece in here that comes out from the guard and when i put the air box into here the holes for the screws for the air box don't line up at all they're like a, maybe like a centimeter out so what i'm going to do I'm just gonna chop this little bit off, just enough so that I can still slip it in the air box, but then the holes will line up. It's much easier to show you guys on the air box in the car, but you can see there's where I need to put the bolt, and that's where the mounting point is. So we need to chop some of this bit off, just a little bit there so that it slides a bit more forward, and then I'll be able to get both these bolts in and same with the back one as well. So if you don't have a keen eye, you're gonna miss this. It is easy to miss though. So if I just look at this bit of the air box, looks pretty normal, yeah? But if you notice, the seal is actually broken off. So the seal's on the bottom half, but there is no seal on the top half. So see that I can just pick it out basically. So that's a big problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get a bead of that silicon, the black automotive one, and just put it in here obviously take the bottom bit out and put it in there as well and then i'll let it dry so that it doesn't stick the actual air box together and then after that i'm just going to put the air box back in and then it should have a good seal and it won't have half and half like it has now other thing i've also gone and done is cut this bit i still have to clean it up but i just cut a little bit of the lip off so that it could fit into the bottom bit of the air box that bit there so you can see with this bit here, I did drill a hole for the sensor. I've also siliconed all around it. So I used the original grommet and then I put the sensor in that and then put the sensor on. Um, so that's all siliconed up, so that's watertight. I need to clean up this bit still. And then that's my K&N filter here. And this is the other little bit of an issue. You can see that the seal around the airbox lid is basically gone. So what I am gonna do is just, again, run another bead of silicon around the whole thing so that when I end up putting it into here, uh, it actually seals and is watertight. So in terms of air filters, I did want to replace the one that was in there already. As you can see, it's pretty dirty. Um, that's just a standard paper filter and this is a K&N filter, that one there. Now, a lot, a lot of people say it doesn't make a difference. I honestly got this on special. It was like the same price as a normal filter. So I thought, oh, why not? Usually it's like double the price. So I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. So from underneath the guard here, got the hose clamp up there. That's really tight. 
And I also have the hose clamp down there that connects the bendy bit um, just outside the guard to the airbox. I was actually going to silicone both of them, but they're actually really tight as it is. And I also sprayed some water up there and I didn't see any bubbles when I turned the car on. So that was a good sign as well. So no air's escaping from there. So what I'm going to do now is just tuck up this indicator harness and then I'll just put the inner guard back on and then that's done for this bit. So now everything's back together. Now that I've chopped it, all the bolts line up, which is awesome. Sensors in, all siliconed up as well. Lids all siliconed up too. All the clips are on. Now it's just time to test it out. All right, so it is the next day today. I thought I'd show you guys a snorkel in a little bit of light because I was losing light yesterday, but that's the final product. I think it looks pretty bloody cool to be honest. It really suits the car. That's it from the side. Tried to clean it up a little bit. Car's still a little bit dirty, but whatever. And everything went on pretty well. The indicator sits on really flush, which is nice. And the actual snorkel body sits on really flush as well. And doesn't hit the door anywhere here because I've got my bracket on there. Just don't worry about the missing bullets. Didn't exist. And even from the front, it's pretty flush as well. So for an eBay job, not too bad. So basically my final thoughts with the whole job, so I thought I'd just sum it up for you guys. At the end of the day, it is an eBay snorkel. So some problems I found were the template didn't really line up. That's why they call it a guide, I guess, because I had to drill some of the holes a little bit further, maybe one or two mil just to fit the studs in. And the second thing is, you know, the quality of the, the actual snorkel material. We'll see what happens. Some people have said they haven't had an issue and they have, have had it on their calves for years. And other people say, oh, it fades with the sun and all that. But that's something I can only find out while I'm having it on, basically. So I'll update you guys if anything happens with that. And the other issue I just had is the fitment of the pipes. So basically, especially that bendy one that goes from the inner guard to the actual airbox, I did have to trim that down a little bit because it didn't actually fit on with the airbox. I couldn't get the bolts in, you would have seen in the clip before. And one other thing on that same pipe was that it didn't have the hole drilled for the sensor or anywhere to plug it in. So I did have to drill out in the end, you would have seen that last clip, and I also just put some silicon around it just to keep it watertight. But again, it's an eBay snorkel, it's 130 bucks. So if you, have the, if you have the drill and the drill bits to drill out the holes for the snorkel, then you have the drill and the drill bits to drill out the hole in the pipe to put the sensor in. So that wasn't really a big deal. And the tube of silicon was like 20 bucks or something, and I'm sure I'm gonna use it again on something else. I even used it um, to seal up the holes on the plate to hold the snorkel neck in. So I guess it, not really a waste of money at the end of the day, it's just something that needs to be done. Because like I said, when I was putting the sensor in, I'd rather have the sensor in, because it's like that from factory, than not have it in, have something go wrong, and just have a headache later on. That's why I just got it once and done, and that's it. Um, but apart from that, everything's pretty good. It fit on decently. It did take about a day to do, but I was filming it and whatnot. Um, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with it. The only way to really test it out is to do an actual run with it, go through some creek crossings or something like that, but that'll just come in the future. I'm not really planning to do anything big at the moment, but we'll see what happens. Better to have it than not to have it, I guess. And the other thing is, I'm gonna try and get some clips of the induction sound. So you guys, you know, if somebody wants to see, oh, what does it sound like with a plastic snorkel? That's what I'm gonna do, because yes, the stainless ones do sound better, um, but this is $130, not $830. So you can probably tell the difference. So I'll just leave you guys with the sound clips. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Keep safe, and I'll see you in the next video.